Chapter 4, 5, Continued Word Problems. Go. Word problems that ask for some type of minimum or maximum. Here's a hint. You want to find the vertex. Given the function, so H of T, usually throwing balls up in the air, dropping water balloons off buildings, uh, some H height is a function of time, or T, that describes height of an object. So if we want to find the max height, hint, find the vertex. And then when it hits the ground, we're going to set equal to zero, meaning the time or the height is basically zero once it touches the ground. Examples. Hey, Carlo plans to build a rectangular pin against an existing wall for his dog. He will buy 20 yards of fence material. Uh, we need to find the length and the width, width and the length, needed to produce the maximum area. Hint. You said it. Find the vertex. Okay. So, sit there and say, here's my dog. If we say that X is that width and this is Y. Okay, we know we bought 20 yards of fence that has to cover him, so we can make an equation. X plus Y plus X equals 20 yards. If we combine like terms, we can make an equation. So 2X plus Y equals 20. Now the other equation we need to know is, well, we're trying to find the maximum area here. Okay. Well, think of the figure, geometry. What is the area formula for what we have? If you remember, A equals X times Y. In other words, length times width, base times height. If what we can do is we can say, well, let's look. We have over here on the left, we have this Y. So let's solve for Y. Y equals negative 2X plus 20. Let's take this equation that's solved for Y and let's input it into our second equation over here. By doing that, we can have, hopefully, some type of area formula. So x times negative 2x plus 20. By simplifying, you're going to get the area that he needs is negative 2x squared plus 20x. Okay? You have a quadratic equation with the squared. Okay? So again, when it says find the maximum area, well, the maximum is going to be the vertex. Hint, find the vertex for this quadratic formula. Vertex, this is in, hopefully you notice, standard form. So we're going to use x equals negative b over 2a. That's going to give us that x-coordinate. Okay. The b term. If you notice what's there, a is negative 2, b is 20, so c equals 0. So opposite of b would be negative 20 over 2 times negative 2. So negative 20 divided by negative 4 is 5. So x equals 5. Hey, we got that over there. So if x equals 5, and we input this 5 into our equation here and here, you're going to get the area is equal to negative 2 times 5 squared plus 20 times 5. 5 squared is 25 times negative 2 is negative 50 plus 100. 100 minus 50 is 50 yards squared. There we go. So if we go back up, what, do we, what is the vertex? Well, we really just got the x coordinate and then we just plugged into our equations, so we actually, if you remember, the a is really the y, so our vertex is 5 comma 50. So the max area occurs when x is equal to 5. Well, the width, if we go back to the other equation and input, so input over here way on the far left, if you input x at 5, okay, we're going to get 10 plus y equals 20. What are you going to add to 10? Or y equals 20 minus 10, which is 10. The length of that is 10 yards. So the dimensions of the actual rectangle are 5 by 10 with a max area of 50 yards. Number 2. Woman drops a, a 
front door key to her husband from the apartment window several stories above the ground. So there's my apartment window. We're dropping the keys several stories. So the function is h of t, the height after a certain time, is equal to negative 16t squared plus 64. Okay, get, that gives us the height of the key in feet after so many seconds when she releases it. We need to figure out how long does it take for the key to reach the ground. So at the beginning, if you remember, when it reaches the ground, we know that that height is 0. So if we input 0 in for h t, not just t, but the whole h of t. So 0 equals negative 16 t squared plus 64. What we want to do is we have a quadratic. Let's see if we can factor. Well, factoring, if you remember, we need to take out the greatest common factor. Greatest common factor says, well, does 16 go into 64? It does. So if I take a negative 16 out, I'm left with t squared minus 4. Think of your factoring skills. I have a uh, perfect square of t and a perfect square of 4. And it's a difference. This is a difference of two perfect squares. So it's something minus something and something plus something. t minus 2, t plus 2. Once we factor, we set each one equal to 0. Does 0 ever equal negative 16? No. Can t minus 2 equal 0? Yes, at t equal 2. And can t plus 2 equal 0? Yes, at t equals negative 2. So we have two answers. Okay. Those answers represent, hopefully you remember, seconds. Can you have negative seconds? No. So their answer is 2 seconds. Write your sentence. It is a word problem. The key will reach the ground after two seconds. And always remember, just say no to negative time. Hopefully you're relaxing. Do your best. Forget the rest. Bye-bye for now. Again.